disabled people a day are going to court to overturn a decision to reduce or stop their benefits. And it's costing you, taxpayers, around a million pounds a week. The government is replacing what it calls the outdated disability living allowance with PIP, or personal independence payment, saying it's a better system based on individual needs. But official figures show that around 250,000 people have lost money in the switch from DLA, and the number of tribunals for PIP has risen sharply in the last year. Now, we've seen leaked letters to judges suggesting the number of cases will rise again this summer. Our reporter Jim Reid has followed two people as they go through the process of appealing. I'm not scared. Why are they doing it? I'm shocked, really. I didn't want to go to court. I didn't see why I should have to go to court to prove that there's something wrong with me. The courts are extremely overrun. So it's, a lot of it's a waiting game. This is what life can be like if your kidneys are slowly failing. All these. Which is all those. Debbie Neal was diagnosed 10 years ago. She takes dozens of pills to manage the symptoms. Then five times a day, she does this, empties out excess fluid from a tube in her stomach and replaces it with new liquid from a bag. They say, you know, don't let it affect your life and live your life, but you can only live your life to a point. I can't even remember what it was like not ever doing it. Debbie lives on her own and works part-time as a cleaner. For years, she's relied on DLA, or Disability Living Allowance, worth £80 a week. But that is slowly being replaced by a new benefit, the Personal Independence Payment, or PIP. When she was reassessed by a private company, all her payments were stopped completely. What was your reaction when you opened that letter? I'm not scared. You know, I, I, I put on a brave face, but inside I'm just... I'm shocked, really. Don't be a burden on society and, and take. We didn't ask to be sick. I'm, an, I'm annoyed that I'm sick. So a normal, everyday person would not get out of breath. That morning, Debbie is meeting Alex Powell from a local charity that helps people with their claims. It should be happening. The government says it is spending more than ever on disability benefits, and many have seen their incomes rise since PIP was introduced. But more than a quarter of a million people have lost out in the switch from DLA. Some, like Debbie, thought they had that support for life. But then this benefit doesn't stop because you're at work, continues to your life. No, it's hard. I mean, it's all sorted out once and for all. I mean, I did ask for this, I know. Debbie has already asked for her case to be reviewed and lost. Now she wants to go to tribunal, in court, to ask a judge to overturn the decision. That evening, Alex is looking over the paperwork at home. These are just some of the files. Um, we've been going since January and we're waiting for a lot more paperwork to come through from different clients. I think at the moment we have about 150 to 200 clients um, that are waiting to go to tribunal, but the courts are overrun. The number taking the government to court over PIP has risen sharply as more are moved on to the new benefit. There are more than 1,500 tribunal cases every week. Now, we've seen a leaked letter to all tribunals suggesting the number is expected to rise further. It suggests judges travel outside their normal court area to help meet demand. How will you react if, if Debbie wins her case on Thursday? I'd be elated for her. Um, I'm always a little nervous when I go in. Um, 
but I know Debbie well. I spent a lot of time with her. I know how she suffers. So I'll be more than happy when the decision's overturned and yeah, I'll be extremely excited for her. You sound confident. I am. In the south, as the rain approaches, the wind will start to strengthen. So the Two days later, and the morning of the tribunal. I, I do, I do feel confident, um, because I, I, you know, I, I am ill, and I've got, you know, deep down, I've got to. Um, believe, you know. Believe it, even though I don't want to. Do you worry what they're going to ask me, or not really? Yeah, because I just, you know, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to answer it. I mean, it's the truth, of course, but you don't know whether they're going to try and twist things or... Debbie, helped by her neighbour Roger, is getting ready to go to the new magistrate's court in Kidderminster. The government says PIP is a more effective system based on individual need and overall more people now receive the highest rates of support. PIP is a, is a better benefit than DLA. It uh, it's, uh, serves a wider range of people with a wider range of conditions better. The statistics show that if you have a mental health condition, you are better served under this benefit. If you have PTSD, if you have dementia, if you have a psychological disorder, if you have a mental health condition, um, that is the case. Case, and it's important that people know that. Debbie's hearing will take about an hour in court number two in front of a judge, a doctor and a disability specialist. The emotions are all over the place at the moment. I can... I don't want to be wrong. She is being represented by Alex, but she'll be questioned directly and in detail by all three of the tribunal members. We are not allowed to film inside the building itself. An hour later, and the decision. Of course you can. Come here, Chick. It's taken a year, but Debbie has won her appeal. Most of her payments will now be guaranteed for the next 10 years. I think the phrase you may be after, that bit there, the decision made by the Secretary of State on the 4th 11th is set aside. That's, I think that's the key wording. It's incredible, really, you know, for people who are out there that are honest, that deserve the, the help, then don't give up. Just, just don't give up. Two thirds of people who take the government to court like this end up winning. Higher for PIP than for almost any other type of benefit. The government says overall just a fraction of cases are overturned at appeal. But new figures seen by this programme suggest PIP tribunals like this are now costing the government around a million pounds a week and rising. It feels like going to court, even if it isn't meant to be that. You need to the judges and others who sit on tribunals have to deal with these cases every day. They could be sacked if they speak to the media, so we agreed to hide their identities. As a tribunal member, we often have to start again when it comes to appeals. We often see people who get nothing at all in the first assessment. Then we end up giving the maximum award possible and just can't understand why they were awarded no points. The people I worry about are those who don't appeal if they get turned down for benefit. Because I think appealing is a pretty intimidating process. You need to be fairly courageous, fairly upset, fairly angry and have a great sense of injustice in order to get to that appeal stage. Tony Edwards is one of those people. For years, he ran his own surfing business in Cornwall. In 2002, a serious car accident left him in a coma with a broken back and neck. Everything's changed. Whatever I could do before, I now either have to find a new way of doing it or I just can't do it at all. So not only have you got no mobility, you've got no, no life left anyway. Like Debbie, he thought he was guaranteed benefit payments for life under the old DLA scheme. He uses a walker and his health is unlikely to improve. My whole life has gone downhill. I, I couldn't work anymore. And then I got a letter through saying that everything was being changed to PIP. 
and I thought Natchez seemed not to worry. Whatever I had on DLA would be the same on Pip, but no, completely different. I lost everything on Pip. Tony's own GP wrote three different letters on his behalf saying the assessment company had got it wrong, but it didn't make a difference and the decision stood. You went to tribunal? Yeah. Were you initially reluctant to go down that route? I didn't want to go to court. I didn't see why I should have to go to court to prove that there's something wrong with me. You know, the government would say the amount we're paying for disability benefits is going up and up and up. What would your yeah. response be to that? Something seriously wrong with the system. Um, admittedly, yeah, there are people out there that are faking it, are lying. So, yeah, I can understand uh, having to be a way of weaning these people out. But the, for those that actually, I even had medical, if I was faking, why would my doctor write a medical note backing me up? He wouldn't. If someone said to me, right, tomorrow you can have all your health back and be exactly how you were before your accident, but it means you lose everything you've got since the accident, would you do it? without an instant. I wouldn't even think twice. So again, with help from a local group called Benefit Resolutions, Tony did make it to tribunal. It took a year, but he won, and all his payments have now been restored. It's hard to explain it. It's, it's almost like them saying to me, we don't believe there's anything wrong with you. Please come here and prove that there is. And that's like, that's an insult in itself. And that's, that's what the tribunals are like. The fact that you're going to sit in the waiting room, you feel like a criminal, you're then called through into what feels like a court and you have to walk in in front of a judge. Why do I need to stand up in front of a judge and say what's wrong with me? Because I've not broke the law, I do not, I've not done anything wrong that I need to be in court for. I do not need to be... Calm down. I do not need to be stood in front of a judge. And that annoyed me more than anything else. The government's own independent review has said that cases like this are eroding trust in the whole system. Ministers say PIP is still much better than the benefit it replaced. For the moment, though, the number of those tribunals is likely to keep rising across the country. And many comments from you. Uh, Picard on Facebook says, I am one of those, 300 a day. Last Tuesday, I went to plead with a panel consisting of a doctor, a judge and a disability expert to reinstate the equivalent of PIP and my lifetime high rate DLA mobility component. My mobility is the difference between being housebound, housebound and independent. I lost. I lose my mobility car in three weeks time and I can't afford to buy a used one. I'm in constant pain, I'm barely able to walk two steps without it worsening, yet deemed able to walk unaided for 20 to 50 metres. I take opiate medications and I'm still in pain. The disability expert merely questioned my ability to cook a meal and asked if I had aids to help me, could I do it? How did I get my earrings in if I couldn't wash my hair? I was gobsmacked. They could only judge me on how I was last October too, when I was first assessed for PIP. Not the fact that things are worse now and will continue to be until I'm in a wheelchair. I feel like I'm not believed, even with all the medical evidence I have, and it's wrong. Christopher on Facebook, DLA to PIP is a shocking system, harrowing. My wife had to appeal at mandatory reconsideration stage due to lies, misinterpretation and omissions in her original assessment report. A very stressful and upsetting experience. Trudy says this, having been through three PIP assessments, I can honestly say it was the most soul-destroying experience I have ever been through. I was actually at one point called a liar by a member of staff at Atos. How on earth the government has allowed this to carry on is beyond me. G texts this, after my assessment I was told, because I could open a tin of cat food, I was fit for work. Linda says, I certainly have no problem with disability benefits being paid to those who should receive them, but the government also has a duty to protect public funds. The blame for genuine claimants being treated as they are lies squarely on the shoulders of those who exaggerate their disabilities in order to receive benefits. Thank you for those. There are many more. Do keep them coming in. After 10, we'll talk to a Conservative MP who says the system is working.